In this lesson, we're going to learn how to set up the LS12000 for use with the Envy. Let's get right to it. The resolution setting on the Envy display configuration page, you're going to set that to 3840 by 2160, regardless if you have a scope screen or not. That's because the LS12000 is a native 3840 by 2160 panel projector. For the peak luminance, we're not going to go ahead and set this here. We're going to cover that in an upcoming lesson. Next, we're going to go to the MB Display Calibration menu. There's two functions here that we need to set. First is the transfer function. We're going to set that to 2.4. And correspondingly in the Epson, we're going to go to the gamma correction setting that can be found in the Epson from the main menu under Image, select Gamma, and set that to negative 2. That will work out generally to about a 2.4 effective gamma and therefore match the transfer function setting in the MB. For the gamut, we're going to change the MB setting to lock that at BT2020. Now, when using a 3D LUT, the transfer function and the gamut options are not available in the menu. So then in that case, don't worry about it. That will be controlled by the LUT. The HDR flag, leave that set to off. Here you can see what it looks like in the menu. Now, if you're running a scope screen, we're going to configure that in the NV screen configuration menu. We're not going to cover that here. That'll be covered in an upcoming lesson. From the Epson image menu, we recommend turning the following settings off. These are located in image enhancement under the sub menu, noise reduction, MPEG noise reduction, super resolution, and auto contrast enhancement. These enable the Envy to handle all the processing of the image instead. Under the basic picture settings, use the following. Color mode, natural. Brightness, 50. Contrast, 50. Color saturation, 50. Tint, 50. And white balance, color temp, 6500K. For dynamic contrast, we recommend setting this to high speed. For the scene adaptive gamma, this feature should be turned off. Under Image Processing, which is under Source Image Processing, set this to Fine. Ensure that the color space located in the Signal I.O. is set to Auto, which is the default. If a calibration will be performed, choose Color Mode Dynamic to take full advantage of the more aggressive laser dimming. For the highest quality motion handling, set Frame Interpolation to Off, which is in the Image menu, and instead use the Envy's Motion AI in the MV Extreme. Note that frame interpolation should always be off when performing a calibration. In the Epson Network menu, set PJ Link to on. This will be useful when we introduce our IP control. Under the Epson Signal I.O. configuration, you can find a signal format and set that to video range 16 to 235. In the Eden menu for the Epson LS12000, the default is up to 4K, 120, 40 gigabits per second. This will enable you to use the Envy's Motion AI at up to 4K, 120. For the Aspect option that's located under Image Aspect, set that to Auto. Finally, for a sanity check, play 4K HDR pretty much any movie except what you see listed here. Check that the incoming signal menu shows that you're getting a 23.976 signal and not 59.94 or 60p. If you are getting 59.94 on the incoming signal, check your source device setup to make sure it's set up properly as we covered in a previous lesson. When playing 4K HDR content, check that the incoming signal from the MV menu shows the transfer function of HDR. If not, the MV is not receiving HDR from the source player. If the colors look a little undersaturated or oversaturated, Please check the Epson menu to confirm the projector is using the correct corresponding color space, which we covered a little bit earlier in this lesson. Well, that's a wrap on this lesson. Let's get on to the next one.